Welcome to the Rising Stars Show. I'm Miriam Knight, and we have some terrific guests today, each with a different and insightful piece of the puzzle of who we are and all we can become. Our first guest today addresses a particularly interesting piece of the puzzle. She is Dr. Eliza Metas, a physician and mother of five who practiced internal medicine in Houston, Texas, for over 30 years. In fact, she is still practicing. But in 2009, after the death of her 20-year-old son, Eric, she began journaling her grief on her blog, Channeling Eric. Because of her strong science background, she viewed spiritual matters such as the soul survival of death with skepticism. But once Eric began to communicate with family, friends, and blog members, her entire paradigm shifted. Today, she works with a spirit translator who channels Eric and shares his insights from the other side about death, the afterlife, and so much more. So Dr. Methus' first book is called My Son and the Afterlife, Conversations from the Other Side. But now, in fact, yesterday, she published a new book. It was the autobiography, if you will, of her son, Eric, authored in his own words. It's an extraordinary book called My Life After Death, A Memoir from Heaven. Welcome, Elisa. Is it Elisa or Elisa? Elisa. I'm not going to make it easy on you, am I, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Well, you know, the book was so extraordinary because it had the feel um, of one of these near-death experience reports because it felt so much like a uh, a narration of the actual experiences, and you just f- feel the the truth of the narrative coming through the pages, and yet it's a channeled book. So um, I understand that Jamie Butler is the the uh, the channel or the the spirit translator. You call her. That's right. And um, she must be a very talented and clear channel because this comes through so clearly and rings so true. So I I am just delighted to have you on the show to talk about it. Oh, thank you for having me. I I appreciate it. And the book has done just really uh, the feedback we're getting is just electric. People have emailed me or posted on Facebook or in the blog that they've cried, they've laughed, they couldn't put it down. Some of them skipped work today because they couldn't sleep last night. So it's it's really been so fulfilling. I'm so proud of Eric for what he's done here. I'm I'm not at all surprised, and I'm wondering um, who the audience is going to be for this book. I suspect it's going to be much wider than anyone anticipates because the book is written sort of from the young male vernacular. You know, it's very salty language and it's written with an immediacy that um, you you get a sense of his character, his personality. Um, it's fun. And yet it probes the questions, the existential questions that we all ask ourselves about, is there really something beyond death? You as a scientist had to make that transition at a very difficult time. I I can't imagine anything more devastating than a mother losing her son, uh, her child. And um, what did it take you to get to accept that what you were experiencing in terms of connection from Eric was real? Well, actually, it was one experience that happened three days after, uh, after Eric's death. I received this call from my militantly atheist father, and both my parents are atheists, so that made me even more of a skeptic about life after death. And he said that he was sitting in his chair with his paper, and all of a sudden there was Eric standing in front of him. And then Eric apparently morphed into his little boy version 
and crawled up into his lap. So my father's like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. I'm so startled. I don't know what to believe. So it, it really made an impact on me. He would, he's not the kind of person to make up stuff like this. He's an extremely rational, logic-minded guy. And so that's when I started to do what I needed to do, explore the science behind it. I read so many books on quantum physics, especially those that are uh, that surround consciousness survival. I read um, controlled studies uh, with mediums, I, alternate dimension papers, near-death experience accounts, so much. Uh, so I, I, I really needed the science. Now, it took me a long time to actually be certain that Eric still existed because I fought it. I fought myself. I really did not want to totally believe it, Miriam, because if I did and then found out it was all a bunch of nonsense, then I would be like losing him again. And I can't tell you how much I did not want to go through the experience again. It was like an atom bomb blew up our family. I can certainly understand that. Um, it, it would be like you were losing him all over again if you opened up and then found out afterwards that it was it was just um, an illusion. That's right. And, and, and I would lose him permanently. Yeah. The other side of the coin is that having made that transition to believing in, in, in the reality of life after death and the continuance of the relationship after death, um, how, how, does that, how did that impact your grief? Oh, I think that from transcribing his memoir, I'm healed i really don't grieve over eric anymore i know that sounds so so counterintuitive especially to parents out there but i i miss him like he's away at some college overseas and you know i know that he's going to come through the door with a bag full of dirty laundry at any moment it's, it's that kind of feeling but now i know that he's okay and i know that i can have a uh, a continued relationship with him i know what his life, through, through the transcriptions, what his life as a spirit is like, what he does in his new home, and almost everything about what this new home looks like. Mm. So the mystery is all but gone, really, for me. Let's start at the beginning of the book. One of the most powerful things for me was Eric's own description of his own mental illness and his mental state when he took his own life. Um, how did you feel when you read that or heard that? Oh, you know, I, that, that was horrific. Uh, so I was so numb after finding him, after he shot himself in the head, that a lot of the pieces were missing. And he put all the pieces and more into place. And some of them were quite graphic. And I really had a hard time with that part of the book. I really did. And there were there were several times when I... Pull the, was going to pull the plug on the book and not go on. But um, then the rest of the book is almost like a joyous adventure. But no, transcribing the details of his death was just terrible and something I would not wish on any mother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The details that um, Jamie, uh, I assume it was Jamie, uh, channeled, uh, did that give you an additional measure of certainty or were you already there? I mean, it just seemed where, where she was talking about the reaction, his visiting all the different members of the family and their reaction and so on. It just seemed so personal and something that no channel could have intuited. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, it, it was complicated just additional confirmation on top of confirmation for me. The first uh, session I had with her, I still was not a believer, but, uh, you know, I'd heard that parents will often seek the help of a medium to connect with their child. So out of desperation, I did. And she was able to, first of all, say that, hey, your son's here, and he said he killed himself. She didn't even know I had a son, much less one that took his own life. And she was able to describe exactly where he was sitting behind his desk the fact that he used a gun that he um uh, 
what kind of gun he used, the clothes, a, a very accurate description of the clothes he was wearing, and, of course, that salty, mischievous personality that you now know as Eric. So uh, she, she's quite gifted, quite gifted. You have um, five children. Mm-hmm. How did they react to this phenomenon? Have they accepted it? Oh, yeah. They're big believers, too. They've been on the same journey with me. And we've had so many things happen since Eric died uh, that are indisputable evidence of of his existence. A couple of my children have seen him. Uh, We've watched water faucets turn on, deadbolts lock, unplugged appliances start working, airsoft BBs drop appearing at the ceiling and dropping to the floor. And uh, we don't even have an airsoft gun. Uh, just all sorts of things that defy explanation. So, yes, they're all on board. <laughs> <laughs> you started up this uh, blog called Channeling Eric, and you have developed quite a large community. Um, tell us a bit about the interaction between Eric and the members of the blog. Oh, they love it when he pranks them. They really do. And they get jealous of each other when, when somebody gets pranked and they don't. I remember the first that I know of was from this gentleman uh, in Ireland, Damien. He said that um, all of a sudden he saw Eric standing in front of him. And Eric told him, hey, dude, I bet I could tell you how far away your girlfriend is from you. And Damien's like, um, okay. I mean, here's this ghost standing in front of him. (laughs) So it was quite amazing. Very funny. And then he was able to do it within just a few We're going to have to take a break now, uh, Elisa, and then we'll be right back. We're speaking with Dr. Elisa Medhas, author or mother of the author of My Life After Death. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. If you remember living fearlessly, joyfully, and in a world filled with adventure, happiness, pleasure, and unbridled living then this show is for you. Join me, Dame Nicole Brandon, as I bring you the world's top experts in wealth, creativity, flow, seat edging technology, space, wellness, health, love, lust, and passion, all merging together each week here at the Hub of Happiness. Mondays at 6 p.m. Pacific Time and 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Passionate Living where you can ride on the magic carpet ride of living and learn how to lead a passionately wild, exciting, and outrageously amazing life. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Are you trying to get from point A to point B and need a little advice? Connect with the counselors at Ohm Times Advisors. Whether you're looking for a life coach or a spiritual intuitive, the advisors participating at advisors.ohmtimes.com were carefully chosen based on their gifts, skills, and professionalism. Ohm Times Advisors, connecting you with the best advisors in the business. Hi, this is Sylvia Henderson, Intuitive Life Coach and Energy Healer. Are you ready to elevate and rise way above your normal? Be sure to listen to my show, Intuitive Transformations, on Own Times Radio, Sunday evenings at 9 p.m. Eastern. Get the inspiration you need to transform your life. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Are back. We're speaking with Dr. Elisa Medhus, who is co-author, along with her son, Eric, of My Life After Death, A Memoir from Heaven. Elisa, what is the uh, web address of your blog it's www.channelingericwithak.com. So Eric is spelled with a K. And the membership is just lovely. We are such a close family. There are over 30,000 of us. And, uh, you know, I created it because 
I was in such pain and maybe it's the doctor in me, but I heal best when I help others. So I, I wanted to create some sort of platform, some place, a safe place for others in pain to share and uh, their own pain and, and uh, feel supported. Uh, but now we're just such a close family. And some of the members have flown across the country to, to meet each other. Oh, lovely. Oh, lovely. I was just on the blog this morning and I was looking at the conversation and it's really very heartwarming how they're trying to help each other. It really does have this feel of a family. That's absolutely right. It's my, it's my cyber family, my other family, <laughs> the, the, the family that doesn't know all my flaws. <laughs> I guess you must be human, Elisa. Oh, definitely. Uh, tell me about Eric's current occupation as a guide. How did he um, come into that? Well, it was a spiritual contract for him. Most people don't have the spiritual contract to take their lives, but Eric was supposed to, had designed for himself before incarnating, uh, to come here and suffer just immensely with his learning disabilities, his Tourette's, his bipolar disease, and, and so on. And he was quite the target for bullies, unfortunately. So the poor guy was just miserable. But he was supposed to endure that so he could develop the compassion and the listening skills and other tools that would uh, allow him to become a better spirit guide. And that's what he does now. He, he guides humans particularly the blog members. And um, he's, he's just very loving, but no nonsense in the way he does things. He says that spirit guides, you know, almost everybody has a role. Every spirit has a role in heaven. Spirit guides are actually quite common. He says they're like the, the taxi cabs in New York. So I, I think that's pretty funny. But, uh, but there are obviously almost an infinite number of other spirit guides like him. I was I was interested to see his uh, comparative definitions of spirit guides, angels, archangels, and so on. Um, it, it really has a lot of fascinating aspects that um, I, were kind of uh, presented in a very original fashion and really very compelling. You know, I'm wondering whether because there seems to be such an explosion of autism, of, of um, angst and uh, rage and bewilderment among young people, whether that was part of his contract to act as a life, a light, particularly for, for younger people um, in this very difficult uh, time. I think you might be right. Something very interesting happened yesterday. I received this email, or maybe it was the day before yesterday, from another medium I used, Kim Babcock. She uh, said that this young boy about Eric's age came in for a reading, and he seemed just happy, happy-go-lucky, just wanted to hear maybe from his loved ones on the other side. And all of a sudden, Eric barges into the session and says, tell, tell him, dude, don't kill yourself. And the young boy just sobs. I mean, Kim had no inkling that he was suicidal at all. And at the end of the session, the, the last words he said before he left were, was, uh, thank you, you saved my life. And he came back the next day uh, also to say that he was on a new spiritual journey, that he has turned around and that he's so hopeful and so happy. His mother came in uh, also later that day just to thank Kim for saving her son. So, and we get this all the time. Eric seems to save a lot of people, uh, if not literally, figuratively. For example, I had one comment from a blog member who said, um, I was planning to kill myself today, but after reading this post, I want to live. So it's been very powerful and uh, in, in a way very overwhelming for me because I'm just a half broken little woman not anticipating this to become what it's become. It's very surreal to me, Miriam. I'm I'm not surprised. Uh, we we've been taught to close down the intuitive part of ourselves, 
uh, from earliest childhood, whether it's imaginary friends or or symbols or signs. And I think this current time of awakening is reconnecting with that part and opening to the possibility that we are indeed infinite beings who simply transition from the physical form to our infinite form. And we're here with a purpose and we're here to learn and grow and evolve. And that's the the message that keeps on coming through um, from Eric's book. What do you feel is the most important piece of insight that he has shared with you that you would like others to hear? Oh, gosh, so much. Uh, one thing that I've learned is that you can continue to have a relationship with those you, quote unquote, lose because you never lose them. And uh, they're really the same as they were. They just don't happen to have a body. And they don't have the mental or physical illness that may have plagued that body in life. So you can continue to have a relationship. And there are many ways to do that. That's probably beyond the scope of this show. But I've also learned from Eric how important it is to feel first and think second. He says we are emotional beings. Everything is energy, including emotions. And we are that sentient self-aware energy called emotions. So we have it all wrong. Usually we produce a thought and that creates an emotion and that emotion uh, evokes some sort of reaction or a choice. He says what we really should do is become aware of what we're feeling. Have that emotion first. Let that emotion create a thought and then let that thought create your reaction or choice. I think that's probably one of the most important messages he, he, uh, he has. I'm married to an Englishman and, and, uh, all good Englishmen are te- are taught to keep a stiff upper lip and to <laughs> suppress their emotions. And I, I think that that's kind of the norm in Western society. So that's a really interesting approach to tune into your emotions and let that fuel your thoughts and your creation. Wow. I, I, I really loved that part in the book. Um, the other thing that I was um, taken by in the book was um, Eric's sense of humor, um, his use of humor. C- can you expand on that? Because it's really so delightful. Oh, he's something else. Before he developed bipolar disease, I'm going to say probably uh, before he turned 15, he was the mischief maker of the family. He would hide and then jump out and say boo to his siblings. He'd pester them. He'd have the sheepish little grin on his face when he did. And, you know, he, uh, he likes to pull people's legs, yank their chain, but it's all in fun and, you know, and filled with a lot of love. The other thing is that um, when he talks about spirit guides, if people who are in pain could really believe that they are not alone, that they have the ability to call for help, I would think that that would um, just change our society so much because I think loneliness and despair is really the plague of this time. Um, how, how, how would you think Eric would put that? Well, loneliness is very common now. A lot of people feel like they don't belong and some of them actually don't really belong to this planet. They're from other planets originally. So, uh, or sometimes they're teachers. So students come in and out of their lives uh, all the time. Uh, but uh, he talks about that a lot on the blog, and um, it's really helped a lot of people who feel alone. And this blog has created this sense of community that dispels uh, that loneliness. Is there sort of an, an age range that you um, notice in the blog? Do, do you get any sense of whether it's more for younger people or, or the oh, whole gosh, range? Oh, no. gosh, Everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, this is – I think science is really uh, bringing b- – bridging the, gra- the gap with spirituality because – they're discovering so many things. They've discovered that, yes, there are parallel dimensions. They, they think that the soul is made of neutrinos, little tiny particles that, we're able to, that are able to pass through lead. 
They've discovered that the soul mm-hmm. tethers to the body within the micro hollow spaces of microtubules in the in the, each cell. So it's, you know, science is is really making this a very broad based um, uh, readership. Uh, and, and also, we we have what seventy three million baby boomers who are grappling with their own mortality. Some of Indeed. us have lost parents. Some of us are thinking about you know our own eventual death. So there's a big interest in all age groups uh, about well what comes next. Indeed. So if you have one piece of advice to those who have lost a loved one, what would you say? I would say they're not lost. You need to continue to have a relationship, whether you learn to channel on your own, which you can do, and Eric talks about that a lot in, in the uh, in the blog, uh, or whether you use uh, a reputable, very good medium. Uh, there are all sorts of ways that you can, c- you can c- communicate with your loved one. They're not lost forever. Not lost forever, indeed. Oh, well... I, I want to wish you the best of luck with your, your book. Um, Thank you, Miriam. It's called My Life After Death, A Memoir from Heaven by Eric Medhus with Dr. Elisa Medhus. Elisa, um, again, what is the blog address? www.channelingeric.com. And Eric is spelled with a K. Channelingeric.com. Elisa, thank you so much for being with us today. You're most welcome. Thank you. And I would like to invite you to stay tuned because we're going to take a break and we'll be right back after these few messages with our next guest. The Real Conscious Connection, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Looking for inspiration? Want to be inspired? Not sure where to go. Find Mark and Kim every Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern on Inspired Living. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. You are are the inspired inspired and the inspiration. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. September 23rd, September 23rd, September 23rd. Mark that down on your calendar. Put it in your phone. Whatever you do, circle that date. 9 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio. Yes, it is the return of the Joe Show. We will come back live with Season 9. Wow, nine seasons. I can only think of four. Winter, spring, summer, fall. Salt, pepper, oregano, and thyme. No. Anyways, we don't have that much time. We're going to be back live September 23rd. Don't forget at 9 p.m. Eastern here on Home Times Radio. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Home Times Radio. IOM FM. And we are back. And my next guest is Dr. Carol Michaelani Hannum. Carol is a medical intuitive who developed a powerful healing technique called the Holon Method, which was developed over 30 years of studies in many disciplines, including Reiki, Herbology, Homeopathy, 
the Hulda Clark Research uh, Body of Information, Body Talk, Healing Touch, and Applied Resonant Dynamics. And she was one of the healers recommended by the renowned Dr. Norm Sheely. Carol holds two minister's licenses and a Doctor of Divinity degree. She also holds a degree in landscape architecture and designed passive solar houses in Sonoma County. She is the author of The Holon Method, a breakthrough in energy medicine, a step-by-step guide to <coughs> powerful self-healing. Welcome, Carol. I'm so delighted you could be with us. Hey, welcome yourself, uh, Miriam. <laughs> <laughs> delighted. Well, you know, the, the Holon Method is fascinating. I really enjoyed reading the book. It sounds like a totally different dimension. Tell our listeners what the Holon Method is about. Okay. Um, the Holon Method is basically designed to address all uh, diseases or problems and symptoms. And uh, that's a big order, I know, and it sounds a little bit uh, overblown. Uh, but it does it uh, because the root of all illness has been found to be pathogens and toxins. And if we can get rid of those, which the Holon method can do, um, you you achieve uh, a healing uh, for practically everything. Okay, let's start with what is a holon. Okay, a holon is basically a particle that comes from chaos to coherence. In other words, the, there is a a coherent pattern in the um, the nuts and bolts, and there was no pattern. There was a chaotic pattern in the cell before, or DNA, or whatever it was. So this is why I uh, called it that. So is it like a standing wave? Is it in the the genes, in the genetic material, or kind of overriding the whole cell? It's basically overriding the whole cell. Mm Mm-hmm. And so it, it's basically a, an, a field of information mm-hmm. that is either creating health or creating disease. Is that a reasonable way to put it? Well, there is a field of information out there uh, that creates health or disease. And yeah, uh, but the whole on is a actual uh, physical particle that uh, it has been named the whole line method after this principle uh, that operates in the particle, the the chaos to coherence. And tell us about your approach to actually addressing the information in it and changing it. Okay. The information... I pick up uh, through intuition. I'm a medical intuitive, and I I actually work with the whole body, so I do a a, a complete scan. And with um, kinesiology, I check yes or no answers as far as um, the pathogens and toxins go. So what what I do is is first check and see what's going on. And uh, then I work with it, with the um, with the actual whole on healing. So you're actually picking up the signature of pathogens and toxins, and how do you get them to disappear? Oh, okay. Well, it it's pretty simple. It's like uh, you ask and you receive. And the thing is that you have to ask correctly. It's like a scientific prayer method. Um, and these, um, uh, I use the commands to uh, talk to the body, talk to the cells, the higher self, uh, into uh, releasing the unwanted elements in the body. 
Mm-hmm. And that's basically how I do it. Uh, uh, there are more nuts and bolts beyond that. And one is, is a, uh, can be a particular uh, color. And uh, this one color is a cleansing color. And this was um, research from Dr. Wilhelm Reich, who did some amazing research on, on the bionic light. And uh, I believe that this, what I do, is uh, provide the bionic light to the body. And this light is coherent. It is very powerful. And what's not wanted, what is chaotic to the body, disappears. When you say you provide bionic light, is this done... Physically or through intention? Uh, through intention. I, I say, in particular, this particular light, I, I, I say the words about this light, and um, I ask all the pathogens, all stages of the pathogens, to be released in all tissue types of the body. And um, I have a time where this washes down. It's usually... Minimum 15 seconds, depending. And then after that, I can check the body and see what is released. And what is released is actually uh, in energy form. The 65% of this little stuff goes out into energy form, matter into energy. And the rest is... Uh, regular die off as if you were to take herbs. Mm-hmm. So the die off is limited. Yeah, go ahead. And how many patients or clients have you actually used this on? And how, how did you kind of refine the results as you went along? Mm, okay. I've used this on, let's see, thousands, actually thousands of clients. I've been at this process for about 30 years, and I have perfected it uh, recently. And um, then I, I look at the results and, and check and, and see if this, um, all the pathogens and toxins that I have checked out um, leave. They're gone. And then I get feedback from the client. Yeah, they're gone. Um, they don't know that they're gone, but uh, it looks like, for all intents and purposes, they are. So the proof of the pudding is that they're feeling better. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and that's my main, that's my main um, item of um, substantiation. Uh, I know people have spent about thousands and thousands of dollars trying to get some scientific proof. I really don't bother with that because even though people can see the scientific proof in in facts and figures, um, there's some that are still skeptical. So um, this is why I don't do that. And it's not necessary for me or um, the client to do it if the client feels better, and which they usually do. So this sounds like a kind of combination of, um, I guess you would call it energy healing, um, as well as some faith healing or spiritual healing. Uh, it, it seems to kind of straddle the, the spiritual and the scientific. Uh, is, is this, how, how did you actually come to it? Was it gradual? Um. It, well, part of it was gradual. Um, I had been working on another uh, form of healing just with broadcasting colors from my third eye for a long time. And until I went to Hawaii and and uh, I found a process that uh, is uh, uses commands. And I presented to this to the my work partner who who helped me with this process too and uh, we did a lot of work on her relatives which definitely who needed a lot of work anyway um, she loved the work and as it was 
um, I hated it because it was it was too um, it was too uh, uh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Um, it was too cumbersome. Uh, the person who um, invented the work um, did 40 hours uh, on one client. And I said, oh, forget that. But anyway, my work partner wanted to continue it. And I was kind of flummoxed. And then I said, well, why in the heck can't I um, invent my own commands? Uh, so I did. I started in with a couple of commands and uh, worked on somebody that that uh, we both both know. And I was sitting in my truck and uh, I called her and I said, hey, could you verify this, you know, so I'm not crazy? Uh, is this person um, improved? Does she still have the tumor or whatever she had? I don't remember. And um my friend said, yes, cool. So she's, she was an expert on kinesiology. Um, so uh, I said, okay, wow, this is so cool. So how long did it take? Uh, how long did it take uh, the actual healing? Mm-hmm. Oh, it took minutes, actually. So from 40 sessions to just minutes? Yeah, absolutely. That's very cool. Yeah, yeah, and it, and it's very simple, and I like it. And this uh, healing doesn't have to be um, laborious or or slow. It can be as fast and as comprehensive as you want it to be. Excellent. Well, we're going to take a quick break now, and then we will be right back speaking with Dr. Carol Hannum about the Holon method. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Imagine receiving healing, vibration-raising energy as you listen to the radio. Energy that flows effortlessly to you. Imagine exploring all things metaphysical, sharing in an ongoing adventure. Join me, Karen Smoot, along with my co-hosts, Lisa Victorson and Wendy Weber, for Immersion into Source, Every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on OM Radio. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. OM Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Simone Millicis would like you to know that business can be fun, which is why she wrote the book, Joy of Business. What if you could have the joy of business rather than the stress and struggle? Most of the time, the only thing stopping you from a thriving business is you. In the Joy of Business book, Simone gives you access consciousness tools and pragmatic ways to get out of your own way and to create the business, life, and living you know is possible and beyond what this reality says is achievable. Business is joy. It's creation. It's generative. It can be the adventure of living. You can purchase your copy of the book through Amazon or Joy of Business website, www.accessjoyofbusiness.com. Mediumship Messages and Musings explores mediumship and all things metaphysical. Lisa Phoenix invites you to reach above and beyond your everyday experiences to explore new dimensions in the spirit world. She will do live readings to connect callers to their loved ones in spirit, shares engaging stories and teachings from her own personal experience, and will have intriguing conversations with other mediums, spiritual teachers, and healers to help you understand the metaphysical world so you can connect to these forces in your day-to-day life. Join your host on this magical and metaphysical journey into the world of spirit every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Ohm Times Radio. 
IOM FM. Back with Dr. Carol Hannum talking about the Holon method. Carol, um, before we, the, the break, you were saying that the healing actually takes only minutes. Um, now, you have been doing this for a long time, and so presumably you have a kind of clear uh, a channel, if you will, to, to channeling energy and, and light and color. And yet your book is called A Breakthrough in Energy Medicine, a Step-by-Step Guide to Powerful Self-Healing. So that implies that this is something that we can all do. Is, is that um, a, a reasonable assumption? Uh, absolutely, because um, basically spirit is infinitely divisible. And the um, universal healing energies that are employed in this work can be divided and they can be shared. It's, it's just so beautiful and lovely to um, know that this can happen. So I'm not the big healer. It's like you are, and everybody else can be. So Tell me about the universal healing energies that you were just referencing. What do you mean by that? Okay. Uh, universal healing energies is a big category that I use for the energies that are in space that are linked together like string with vortex energy and and um, it, it's a, a double rotating tube torus. I don't know if you've studied Nassim Haramein's work, but uh, anyway, these these items are linked together, and they have intelligence. So through through the channels of the universal healing energies or this medium of of empty space so called the information is transferred and we do that simply by calling upon it by intending just just by intending and being very specific about what you want mhm and it has to be specific um you can be general like saying Oh, I accept the best healing uh, possible. Well, you would have to say this command every single day or every hour to affect anything. The Holon method works to uh, improve that so you have a more permanent situation. All you need is is one particular healing. And by the way, the, the healing doesn't just happen in minutes. It's There's a number of steps in it. But the actual cleansing of these uh, items does happen within minutes. I just wanted to clarify that. Well, give us an, uh, a description of the process. Okay. So I first um, say the emotional command to uh, clear the body of um, energies that would interfere in the space. And second of all, I would use the uh, another command to balance the nervous system, the autonomic, parasympathetic, sympathetic, and both sides of the the body to balance, and the uh, also the electrical system. There, there is an electromagnetic part of the body that uh, I, I um, address. So people are, are ready for the uh, cleansing. There is a number of other things, uh, integration work and also uh, in, emotional integration work and also um, uh, working to have the body parts communicate to each other better. And a few other things. That's in the first part. And then the second part is the physical commands. There are about 30 of them. And the first to address the the cleansing part of it. Uh, And the second part 
addresses the the actual repair and regeneration of tissues. And then there's a, a another part that addresses genetic weakness, and that can change too. It's pretty amazing how that happens, but it does. So it's going down through the various body systems and the, the various things that can um, throw the body out of kilter and right. sort of readjusting each one. And each command is like a sentence long? Oh, it's uh, a sentence or two sentences. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So um, it, it uh, really is a way of focusing one's attention um, on a full body kind of assessment, kind of like a an X-ray or a CAT scan of all the different systems. Right. Very interesting. So give us uh, a, a couple of um, examples of uh, people who have benefited from it. Oh, okay. I'll give you one example that's... Um and that's hot off the press, and this is somebody that um, has had diarrhea for uh, years and years um, since they went to Mexico. And when I looked at it, I, I did an analysis first, and they had all kinds of protozoa, uh, parasites, uh, salmonella, E. coli, and a number of other um, other little creepy crawlies. And you discovered this through kinesiology? I did, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a whole list that I go through and I say yes or no. All right, does this person have that? First, I, I get the signature of the person, the energetic signature like you talked about before. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have that firmly in mind and then I ask questions uh, of my list. And so I get the... the uh, toxins and the pathogens that they have in the body and I make sure that it's all gone by checking off everyone and I wait um, after I've I've said the command the clearing command then I wait maybe for three or four minutes and then uh, start checking off the uh, toxins and microbes that are cleared and, and people don't have to do chelation therapy to get rid of the heavy metals in their body, they can do this, which is just embarrassingly simple and uh, bafflingly, baffling, baffling. <laughs> bafflingly, bafflingly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness, and no side effects. And no side effects, yeah. There are some people that have side effects, and how I deal with that is... Um, is using um, just cleaning specific parts like the lymph and the blood. And after I, I clear, after the whole... So it, it, let me just interrupt you. So the side effects are actually part of uh, like a healing crisis? They're the healing crisis where there's uh, people respond to the die-off of organisms, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, I wanted to tell you what happened w with this woman that I did uh, clearing on about 10, 15 days ago. Uh, she reported producing um, nice looking and solid stools since then. And she feels better. Her body parts are filled out. She's gaining a little weight. Uh, I haven't seen her, but uh, this is what she reports. So it, it evidently was successful. And uh, that's, that's one of the the major examples of, of what could happen. And you did you do that at a distance? No, actually, I did it up close because uh -huh. the person was local. Right. That is so fascinating. Um, I, do you have to speak nicely to the protozoa or, or <laughs> speak sternly? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I, I just say, say that um, we want you to go... Um, and spirit, um, please invoke uh, a blue electric light to to clear and uh, the particular organisms or, or all the organisms and and toxins. So I just they just respond because they're 
they're exposed now to a higher energy field. They're exposed to several atoms of oxygen around their different molecules. Mm. They have a different molecular structure than than anything else in the re- rest of the body, like um, the uh, beneficial uh, organisms in the gut. So, Carol, yeah. do you have a website where people can find out more about this? Yeah, I do. It's called wholeunmethod.com. That's H-O-L-O-N mm-hmm. method.com. Right. Okay. And and your book, again, is called The Whole On Method, A Breakthrough in Energy Medicine, A Step-by-Step Guide to Powerful Self-Healing. So I want to thank you, Carol, for being with us today. That was really fascinating that we have the power simply through our intention to heal ourselves. And here's a, a fascinating way that you come up with. Thank you, Carol. Well, I really appreciate it, uh, Miriam. I, I really... And I hope you will join us next t- week. I'm Miriam Knight. I'm the publisher of New Consciousness Review, and I hope you'll see our new issue which is just out today of the magazine at ncreview.com. So thank you again. And until next week, be well, let your light shine.